So in the last section, we finished the boilerplate for our sign-up form and implemented navigation between the sign-up and the sign-in views. Remember, whenever we're on the sign-up page, that means we've got two views on our stack. So we can pop the current view to go back to the first view, the sign-in form. So now that we're here, we've got our form all put together and you know, we could put in all of our text, we need to actually go ahead and uh, sign the user up whenever they press a new button that we'll add in here in just a second, uh, the you know, basically sign up button. One other thing that I just realized that we need to do is we need to make sure that we obfuscate the password inputs, which means we need the secure text entry. So we'll do secure text entry true. on both of our password and confirm password inputs. So let's save that, refresh, and there's our black dots, very good. Okay, so user sign up works a little bit differently than the user sign in, but it's still, at the end of the day, very, very similar. I'm gonna pull back uh, the parse documentation back up over here. If you happen to have closed it, no problem. Just search for parse JavaScript SDK guide or you know something like that, and you'll at end up at a page that looks like this. We'll select the users on the left-hand side, and then we'll just click signing up. So like I said, signing up is just a little bit different than the sign-in code. If you remember the sign-in, we called parse.user.login and that was like, that was it. You know, that was everything we had to do. Signing up is a little bit different. When we sign up a user, we first have to create an instance of a user. We set their username and password and then we call sign up on that instance of the user. So as opposed to being just like one line or you know, one function call, it's just instead two function calls. So just a, you know, a little bit longer, a tiny bit more code. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is make sure that we have a button that the user can press that will actually sign them in or sign them up. So we'll add a button here and the text will be sign up and when they press it, we want to run this dot on sign up. Uh, let's do on sign up press. So presumably, once we're inside of this function, we want to you know, sign the user up somehow. Okay, so one thing I wanna draw your attention to really quick is if you look back here at the documentation, you'll see that there's really nothing in here about a password confirmation, right? There's really just password. But our app has the concept of password confirmation. So we need to manually check to make sure that the two passwords that the user entered are equal to each other. If they're equal to each other, then you know, terrific. That's the password that they probably meant to add. And if they're not equal, then well, they probably made a mistake and mistyped one of them. So the first thing that we're gonna do in here is make sure that the two entered passwords are equal. So we'll say if this.state.password, remember we have access to state.password because we set it whenever uh, the text input is changed. If that is not equal to this.state.password confirmation, then we're just going to entirely return and we want to set state with an error message of your passwords do not match. Okay, um, the error message uh, state that we're setting here. If you recall, that was something that we made use of in sign in, but we haven't made any use of it here in sign up. So let's make sure that we default our initial state with an empty error message, like so. Next, we don't really have any component yet to show that error message, so let's add that really quick. We'll add a text styles.label and we'll just say this.state.errorMessage. 
Okay, so now whenever the user enters passwords, if they don't match, we should see an error message that says, your passwords do not match. So let's go ahead and give this a shot in our simulator. Uh, looks like I've got a little bit of a typo in here on line 47. Uh, it looks like I neglected to close my button tag here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close it. Okay, so I need an account and now I will enter one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll try to sign up and hey, my passwords don't match. Very good. Also note that I specifically called return here. So if the user falls in this state, you know, we can continue to write some code to sign the user up here, but if they fail this check, they're just gonna immediately return from the function and hey, you know, they didn't get to sign up at all. All right, so now that we've got our message here, the next thing we want to do is start putting together the sign up integration. So we want to actually bring parse into the equation here. Uh, we want to create the parse user and you know, blah, 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 sign up, all that stuff. So step one, at the top, we still need to import parse. So we'll say var parse, require parse, and don't forget we need the react native implementation. Okay, back inside on sign up press. So their passwords are equal if they've gotten this far. So if they've gotten this far, we basically wanna say, okay, let's, you know, let's attempt to sign them up for our application. Let's create a new parse user and then save it. So we'll say var user is a new parse user. And then we'll set their username with this.state.username and we'll set their password with this.state.password. Next, and you know, if you don't take my word for it, at any given time you can consult the documentation here. So you can see, you know, we set the username, we set the password. Um, with parse, it's not required that you provide an email, which is why we're not giving one in this particular instance here. But if you want to add a email field to your application, or if you want to say just, you know, tell the user that the username should be their email, you're free to, definitely free to do that. Once we collect that information, we just need to call user.signup. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll say user.signup, and the first argument is null, and then the second argument is a function to which we will pass a success and an error callback. So just as we did with the sign up case, let's go ahead and just, you know, console log this information here. So we'll console log user and in the case of error, there's both a uh, user and error. So let's do user and error and we'll console log the error. Very good. Um, before I run this, before we test it out in the simulator, I want to pop open the parse console again. So I'm going to open up the dashboard here by going to, you, know, you can just go to parse.com, log in as yourself. And then on my app, I'm going to go into core. And I'm going to verify that I still only have one user right here. So let's go ahead. Oh, man, I'm just making typos left and right here. Unexpected token on line 36. I suspect I forgot a comma right there between success and error. Okay, so what we're testing here is to make sure that we can correctly sign a user up. And if we do, it's going to be console logged here, and we should also see it appear on the parse console as well. So I'm going to sign up a new user called tester1 with a password of password, and we'll sign up. And it, we got parse user over here. They've got an ID of capital YP4. So let's go over here 
on the top right hand side this this console is not quite live updating um, so you need to click this refresh button up here on the top right but if I refresh I now see username tester1 just what we wanted perfect let's also test out the case in which a user tries to take a username that's already in use so let's you know actually we can just go ahead and click sign up again you know what the heck so I'll sign up again and username tester1 is already taken perfect if I do tester username tester is already taken and if I do tester2 I get a new user let's confirm that it's there there's tester2 awesome okay so this is looking pretty darn good I like this a lot let's continue in the next section where we make sure that our success and error callbacks are doing what we expect them to do